Greetings and welcome again to the Gaming Codex, the show where I try to explain to you all the various words and terms needed to navigate the treacherous world of video games and the video games industry. And the race term is Vulcan, not to be confused with the alien race, the planet, or the Gatling gun. According to the general definition, Vulcan is a low overhead cross-platform 3D graphics and compute API. Vulcan targets high-performance real-time 3D graphics applications such as video games and interactive media across all platforms. And eventually everything else, it's implied it will. Vulcan is, in a way, what people have been awaiting since the announcement of OpenGL 3.0. Something that changes the norm, but not just for the sake of changes, but to actually bring improvements. One of the main benefits of Vulkan compared to OpenGL is the low overhead, meaning that it is capable of managing the resources of a system in such a way that it can use most of them efficiently. There isn't as much waste, both in terms of the API just not being able to access certain things and in the API itself not really wasting time because time is performance when you get right down to it. The faster you can get something to the CPU to the GPU and to the screen the faster the game will go. Vulkan is built upon a previously existing API, not OpenGL, it is built upon Mantle which is something that AMD cooked up in about what two or three years whereas Microsoft of and NVIDIA were saying that they've been working on DirectX 12 for seven years, still didn't announce anything until Mantle was almost out. Just saying, timelines are a bit funky. But Mantle being supported by just AMD was not going to work. We are not in an industry that can still support GPU specific APIs. They barely support both DirectX and OpenGL, let alone something new. This isn't going to work like it did in the good old 3D effects days with our Glide API. But the fact is that Mantle worked. It showed, even in its early versions, the ability to use all the cores on a CPU for the game. It could feed a GPU until it was completely satiated. It didn't waste that much time compared to OpenGL and DirectX 11. So Mantle was given over to the Kronos Group, which handles OpenGL, and they took the best ideas out of it and formed the basis of Vulkan from it. And on top of that, they added their own things, their own technology, their own ways of handling shaders, a lot of things that makes Vulcan distinct from Mantle. And it also gave this API a chance to live, because Vulcan is capable of running on anything. It is completely agnostic in terms of software and hardware. That means it will run on Windows, on Linux, it will run on Mac, I think, not sure. Macs have uh, Metal, which is their own thing, because of course they do. But most importantly, Vulkan will run on Windows 7 and Windows 8, something that DirectX 12 cannot do. Well, it can, but Microsoft doesn't want it to. Vulkan will also run on any kind of computer. It will run on a phone, thereby replacing both OpenGL and OpenGL ES, which is the mobile version of OpenGL. In effect, this is a combination of everything that Kronos is working towards. It even now encompasses OpenCL, which is the API used for computing tasks. You know, things like running complex calculations on the GPU. And Vulkan is quite good at what it does. Which brings us to the popular definition of Vulkan, and that is the thing that makes Doom run like a champ in 4K on a potato. Doom is currently a very well optimized video game. It it is also one that incorporates Vulcan, a high profile game made by a AAA studio with a lot of experience in making graphics and pushing the boundaries. And Vulcan got a really really bright spotlight put upon it because Doom runs incredibly well on Vulcan. People have noticed how this game released last year that looks kinda nice runs quite well in high details on big resolutions and it tends to use pretty much everything it can in the PC, all the cores, much of the video card 
and it does have the telemetry incorporated that shows you exactly which bit of your system is lagging. It shows you if it's the CPU bottlenecking or if it's the GPU or both of them. It's pretty much designed to show you how good Vulkan is compared to OpenGL. Doom has been the best evidence possible to show to people that don't believe that a new API is necessary that, well, it, maybe it isn't completely necessary, but it sure is dang useful. Performance improvements are great, especially on AMD cards that kind of lack the proper optimization under DirectX. Of course, you're not bound to see this improvement on every game, because a lot of the work that goes into optimizing the game is still on the developer. Probably even more now, because Vulkan can be a bit more hands-off. It implies that the developer knows a bit more about what they're doing. It even gives them the possibility to implement their own moldy GPU solutions, not rely on the graphics vendor to actually implement their own profiles in the driver, just make sure that the game runs properly. So it does take a bit more work. But as id software proved through Doom, it's worth it. So why isn't Vulkan being used now everywhere? Well, let's go to the marketing definition. And that would be nothing. Ignore it. Buy a new GPU. Don't test with it. Well, to be fair, that's not the actual marketing definition. That's what people believe the marketing definition of Vulkan is. Vulkan is currently not being all that well marketed apart from the Bethesda. And that's mostly because they're in bed with AMD and AMD is pushing Vulcan hard on account of it being really good for their video cards. It's good for every video card actually, but a lot for them. Now the reason you're not seeing Vulcan implemented in every game currently is that it's still new technology and a lot of the games we have are based on old technology. I mean, when you break it right down to it, there, there are still lines of code in the last Call of Duty game on the engine that are based on Quake 3. Naturally, it's not the same engine anymore, it's completely different, but bits of it are still the same. Bits, small bits. Things not actually related to what we're talking about today, but I thought I'd mention that. Implementing a new API into an engine takes time, takes testing, takes work. And all the games we're seeing released now, they've been in development for two, three years, maybe four, some five or six. Overgrowth just launched, it's been in development since the Stone Age. So you will eventually see more games that use Vulcan. I do believe that Wolfenstein the new Colossus is gonna be out soon and it will use Vulcan I think. And soon we should also have third party tools that are capable of giving an independent and non-game related assessment of the performance. Yeah, the tools in Doom are nice, but you kinda want a second opinion, something that's objective, something that can be used with multiple games. One of the reasons that a lot of testers are not using Vulkan when benchmarking certain hardware is that they can't really apply something like FCAT to the game so they don't have access to the proper frame data, they don't know the 1 percentile or the 0.1 percentile, or they're just shells for Nvidia because AMD would perform better on those. Everybody has their reason for not using it yet in their testing, but there will be a point when those tools are available, they work, and there will be no more excuses, unless some of them are shills. You know who I'm talking about. Also, when video game engines are built from the ground up to support Vulkan, you may actually see some really big changes in terms of how games look and how they're made. Like if you didn't know there's a thing called draw calls and a GPU has a limit of the draw calls depending on how many can be fed to it. So some things like a flock of birds you may see in the sky in a game when they're flying there, they're not actually individual entities, they're just one big one with all the birds drawn at the same time. That's not gonna be a limitation for video games soon. And that's something valid for Vulcan and the Rec X12. You will be able to see better graphics, more complicated graphics, which will of course require even more work from the artists. And I'm sure they're gonna love that, but without a doubt they will look good and probably will require a new GPU on account of they'll probably gonna max out everything you can do on your current one with the new budget they have for drawing things on the screen. So closes this edition of the Gaming Codex. Come back next time when we will talk about something different. Goodbye.